And hello everybody, welcome to the Swen Joe Travel Show. On this channel, live stream, we talk about travel stuff. And here's my lovely host, Swen. From Swenywhere and Joe from This Way Up Travel. And Joe, I know you're going to tell us exactly what are we going to cover this time in the live stream. Well, we've got some great news for you actually, some really good news. Lots of stuff to do with the coronavirus because that's the biggest thing at the moment. So but let's skip over that very quickly. Yeah. So the other more interesting stuff we're going to cover later on. Ah, okay. So we also got how do we prepare for our videos. It's a bit of a complicated topic, you know, so people are asking us. And then we will be covering also a certain special city, one of my personal favorite cities, Hamburg. And then we're covering, of course, the travel questions of the week. So what question did you guys want to uh, answer us? And then uh, we will finish uh, everything else what you still want to uh, have covered uh, during this live stream. And that's a great way to uh, learn so much more about travel because we're going to be covering a whole bunch of different things. But also, if you're watching this, there's a slight 30 second delay. Do leave a comment because we will be watching out for them. We also like comments. And just to let you guys know, we're actually streaming live in two places, my channel or Sven's. So if you think Sven's not that good looking, I'm much better looking on my channel. That's a joke. But let's move on quickly to the news section. And there we are with uh, the first news that we have to cover. And I want to go through this quickly because I'm kind of done with the coronavirus. But unfortunately, that's the news what's happening at the moment. So. Joe, are you familiar with uh, the website called Trip.com? I actually am not, so please enlighten me. So Trip.com is like a, a booking website that, uh, in, that's very big in mm -hmm. China. Yep. So basically what's happening there is that due to the coronavirus, that they have an issue with uh, all the bookings that they get on the platform. Oh, that doesn't sound too, too much like good news. What kind of problems are they having? <laughs> Well, basically, well, what you can imagine, lots of cancellations and the revenue is not as high as they would expect normally from the website. So, oh, that's not good news, guys. No, but what, what they have done, and I find it quite fascinating by working in a business, is uh -huh. that normally you would say, okay, it's not going that well. We will cut down on the bonuses for all the employees that year. Uh -huh. But instead, this company has decided that the management team, the CEO and stuff, they just cut down their salary. They are not getting any salary from this month onwards just to fight the losses that they will get for the company. Well, that is bloody nice to them. I don't think you're going to find many CEOs that will be doing that. No, no, especially because I follow the gaming news a lot there and that's like all the employees suffer from stress, working hard, mm -hmm. uh, crunch time, all those issues. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I find it kind of admiring that the senior team like the CEO and the senior board members would say, okay, this month, no salary for us till this issue is resolved with coronavirus. And then we will uh, well, oh. continue to take our slides again. Well, in that case, thumbs up to the team. So what's next on the news item? I think uh, there's uh, kind of more lockdowns going on. So China becomes a bit open again. Like I could go to China now again, mm -hmm. but we have a little issue here in Europe at the moment, I guess. Yeah, so what's happening in Europe? I think there's something happening in Italy. So here comes the coronavirus. It turns out they're pretty much locking down the whole of Italy. It started about five, six days ago, something in the past week, where they locked down the north of Italy. And then, and I thought to myself, oh, that's a shame, people can't go to Venice. And then a few days ago, they had pretty much locked down the whole country. Basically, if you want to travel around Italy, you need to have a special bit of paper to, for, to, for you to allow to travel around. There's the restaurants can only open until six o'clock in, in the evening. And uh, if there is any public gatherings, you have to be like a meter apart as in, in a restaurant. And because Italians are really, really social people, I'm thinking there's going to be some very, very upset people until this blows, blows over. I just, this remembers me. I just saw a picture online as well from someone posting um, a supermarket at the moment in Italy. And okay. as you know, Italy are not like the English guys here very well organized queuing and stuff but mm -hmm. now due to the coronavirus you see in like a big supermarket there's even right. a queue going outside and everyone is taking at least a meter distance from the person in front of them just for queuing 
into the supermarket. Oh my gosh, that actually kind of reminds me of the uh, Scandinavians. I think it's the Norwegians when they have these rock festivals. Rather than a proper big mosh pit, they're a lot more they're a lot more polite actually. They're yeah, polite, love the Scandinavians. Any Scandinavian <laughs> people? Hi. So, what's uh, the other topic that? Uh, well, what's next actually? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well. I said I want to move through this uh, quickly. So the the other news that uh, that we had was that uh, Flyby. I've never flew with Flyby before. Have you ever flew with Flyby? I, I actually have flew with Flyby, and I really love them as a as like airplane company. They they're like they're nicer in terms of how they present themselves than like Ryanair, which is like. But, but yeah, Flyby is a budget airline as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a budget, budget airline. It's yes. a budget airline. It's a budget airline, but they just seem to be a lot organized. They have some really like lo- nice like. Uh, uh, flight paths and whatnot. Of course, not anymore. Yeah. So yeah, the Flybe is the first airline, I guess, that uh, went well in administration or bankrupt. I don't know how you exactly word this wherever you are in the world, but here it's in administration. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's administration, it's, yep. yeah. So they uh, don't exist uh, for any longer. Uh, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's really bad news. I've got a feeling we're going to have quite a few of these companies going down. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's it's the first one. If I look uh, just in the industry that I'm in, all the conferences and everything is just cancelled. So all conferences, wherever you are in the world, Mobile World Conference is cancelled. Yep. yep. Uh, all the gaming stuff in in the USA is cancelled. Um, I have some uh, like industry gatherings here that that are currently discussing: shall we go ahead with the conference or not? So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's hitting everybody. I'm I, I I work as a videographer for events. Quite a few of my bookings have been cancelled. But yeah, where shall we move to next, hey? So you you had something with Upfest. You put it in the notes. When we are doing this live stream, we're putting notes to each other. And yep. there was something I didn't read about this yet, but you mentioned uh, Upfest. So I wonder what, what the hell is this? Well, you see, I did add that initially because I'm thinking because there's so much like negativity of the whole like cor- uh, coronavirus and everything, I thought... We need a good festival, a festival of street art. And actually, there's a funding campaign in Bristol where they're trying to fund this street art festival. So if you have a couple of pounds, then you should try and help these guys out and give them a couple of pounds. Um, I'm a big fan of street art. How about you? Well, I love street art, but in that perspective, like London has some great places with Banksy and like all different kind of street art. Mm-hmm. I uh, even remember that uh, a while ago I covered on my channel a, a street art like the near Waterloo station yep. and the London Eye there. There's a tunnel underneath the, the, the rail tracks. The, and graffitis, the, the graffiti tunnel. The yeah. graffiti tra- uh, tunnel indeed in uh, Leak Street. That's, that's a brilliant place yep. to go. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great place for uh, street art. But um, this this festival in Bristol, is this new, the street art festival? Well, I do believe, uh, I must admit, I should have double checked, but I'm pre- pretty sure they've had this street art festival running for the past couple of years. Um, they're running to like some funding issues, so that's why they've got this uh, crowdsource. Bristol being, did you know about Bristol being like almost the capital of a street art in no. this part of the UK? No, I, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. No. So you may know of Banksy, as you may have mentioned, as you mentioned him already, he's from Bristol. Yeah, I knew that part at least. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you want great street art, guys, go to Bristol. Don't forget, this street live stream, we teach you about amazing bits of travel and really informative information. Yeah, so uh, is there anything else you want to uh, say in this new section uh, section before we move on well, to the next place? Well, like I mentioned just briefly a second ago, I like to inform people about different things. And right now, I feel like I need to help educate people on better ways to cope with the coronavirus. Did you know, Sven, that yeah. if you, like this guy loves the whole coronavirus news. I've already I, been affected too much, but yeah, yeah. Continue, continue, Joe. So if you want to actually like a uh, cough, sneeze or cough, don't cough into your hands, but you're supposed to sneeze into your armpit. So I'm thinking if you sneeze, sneeze and dab. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Isn't that a great idea? Through dabbing, we can save the world of the coronavirus. Secondly, you may have seen this already, but rather than handshakes, you're supposed to minimize contact. So, Mm. elbow bump, boom. So guys, rather than shake handshakes, shake handshakes, do handshakes, elbow bump. And and also, if you want to hug people, I know that there's quite a few people out there who are huggers like me. Double elbow bump, boom, boom. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments. Well, you're making jokes of this. I was yesterday at a conference, 
And they were seriously, as one of the announcements at the beginning, they were saying, if you're feeling uncomfortable by giving a handshake at the moment due to the current environment, or hit each other's elbow, uh -huh. or hit each other's feet, basically. Just hit each uh, other's feet. That okay, was like a, a genuine advice during the conference nowadays to, to greet people. What, what's the feet thing? I don't understand. Just hit each other. I don't know. Like No one was doing it. Everyone was still shaking handshakes because they feel more uncomfortable with those weird... Oh, I think it's cool. Bumping, like, but... I, I think it's a fad thing. I, I love these fad things. It's probably going to... I hate to use the word die, but it's probably going to go away. Yeah, no. Quite well, soon. There's this get going on in the Netherlands, which I find is a better way of, like, oh. like greeting each other. And What's that's that like... Then? It's not, not shaking hands, but okay. instead just grab a pint of beer and cheer with each other. Oh, really? Hi. So that works out way better during the environment, yeah, I guess. I like that. I like that. See, I love the Dutch, you see. Um, I do have a series about the, the Netherlands, so you should also check it out on my own channel. <laughs> blood, blood. All right, all right. Uh, do, do, done with this Corona thing. Yeah, I let's think, move on, let's move on. Yeah, no, exactly. I think we should move on to the next section. So we're going to be talking briefly in this section about how we prepare for our videos. So Sven, how do you prepare for your videos? Man, if I have a preparation for my videos, then my content would be way better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you I, I do wish, good content, man. You do I, good content. I, I wish I had a good, consistent preparation for my videos. Okay. And to be fair, sometimes I do prepare. Yeah. And I can talk about that in the future. And sometimes I slightly prepare. Sometimes I don't prepare at all. Okay, so you basically do a bit of everything. That's what uh, you're saying. It so really depends on the content that I'm making. Uh -huh. The location where I am at, the, at that moment in time. Yep. Basically all, yeah, it depends on different factors. Okay. What, what about you? Um, do, you so have, do you have an approach or not? I generally, when I'm traveling to somewhere... Brand new, I'm on one of my big epic trips. Yeah. No preparation at all. I have a list of things that I want to visit and maybe two or three facts and I make sure to rehearse those facts before I record myself talking about it. That's it. Okay, okay, um, okay. If I'm doing a proper oh I'm gonna I've got an idea for something, I do actually make some notes on my phone and I actually go through it. So for example, um, like if I'm in Hamburg for example no preparation, I just yeah. have to do a lot of things, but I tend to do a, a lot of over-preparation when I'm actually editing. So I have scripts and everything oh, okay, that I okay. go through. Um, how do you prepare for your like informational videos? So, everybody, you should check out this stuff. <laughs> so um, if I go on a trip, I normally have an idea what the videos could be that I could get out of it. So okay. I know what destinations I'm going to visit. I have sometimes an idea of uh, what I could make. So for example, yep. in um, South Korea, I knew in regards of Seoul, we were staying there for such a long period of time for like seven days, I believe. And yep. if I'm seven days at a location and just making one video about things to do in Seoul, that would be just a waste waste of time to be fair. There's so yep. much more that you can get out of such a big city. So there yep. I came up with some different topics and I try to film every location based on the topics I had in mind. So okay. I knew I would make a history video. I would, knew I would make a fashion video. Mm -hmm. Basically all the important aspects of South Korean culture. Yep, yep. And then I would just like fit that location within that topic. Yep, I, s I see. And um, I normally just go with the flow on location as well. So I have yep. no idea where I will start. I have no idea where it will end up at all. Mm -hmm. It's all based on, on the moment. Yep. And then in the edit, that's the later part where I would try to make the story flow with, yep. with mainly with um, mm -hmm. voiceovers and stuff. I find that actually that's probably the best way because on the one hand, if you over prepare when you go on a trip, it kind of takes away the magic of discovery, you know? Yeah. So I'm pretty much the same. I like to prepare just to, to make sure I have like a, like a, a general plan, but that plan 80% of the time will change mm -hmm. just so that if I get there and I'm not really discovering anything new I can at least fall back to my plan I love it when I actually do something on the fly and it feels a bit more spontaneous harder to edit but 
it seems to be better. So, so are there moments where you do like really like a, a lot of preparation for your videos? Like when you're not on location, how would you mm -hmm. shoot your videos then? Ah, so so for example, if I was to do a guide to I don't know London food markets, yeah, uh, the best thing to do would be for me is because I know that I know where the location is. I just need to know a list of all the vendors, and um, depending on if the vendors are there for me to actually like have a a uh, like chit chat with, mm -hmm. I would make sure that you know, there's like two, three points I want to ask them. Um, yeah, it's basically like preparation and saying, "Hey," rather than say, "Hello, what is your food and what what do you what do you prepare?" I want to actually ask a bit of a deeper question, like going to their story. Yeah. Um, recently, I went to a vegan food marketplace, which I'm gonna be editing. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to see that. Uh, I basically had a list and I made sure up to the people who were actually there for me to ask some questions. Okay, that's a great thing, yeah. I remember when I made this uh, thing for the free uh, film festival as oh, well, that, that's yes. that's where I had like a whole idea of a, of a script and stuff and I okay. had, had really in mind uh, what I would make beforehand and what kind of scene and how the opening would be. So I had that idea of that city and a rush vibe uh -huh. and then moving from that into Yep. a more peaceful nature vibe what this oh, video was uh, completely I about I see and um, yeah normally I always search online no matter where I am I will search on the location some information about that location uh -huh. and this gave me a little bit more time to put those uh, things together so okay. to, you could do a little bit more research okay, about okay. that as well and um, so do you find uh, you, do you, which part which side of the videos do you like the, the less prepared videos or a bit more prepared videos or somewhere a bit in, in between I prefer the less prepared videos mainly because that means I'm on a new location in a different country uh -huh. and then I don't mind to shoot a video okay due to coronavirus we all struggle with making videos and making trips uh -huh. so that's the moment where I want to make some more videos here in London but I noticed that so many places I go there just regularly to chill for in, in the weekend yep. and now taking my audience to those places it's like but normally I just go here for chill I normally never video oh. this place and, right, right. and then it gets a little bit more awkward to get there just for filming yep yep I see I see so yeah. that's where I then struggle a bit more with but that's nothing to do with being prepared or not being prepared such a professional. Yeah. Such a professional. Always. Who do we have on the line? Who wants to dial in uh, into the last live stream? <laughs> so, um, yeah. sorry, Mum, I'm going to have to get back to you. That's, that's awkward. <laughs> hey, Mum. Hey, Mum. Hey, Joe, Mum. Yeah, I'll get back to you, Mum. <laughs> Whoops. So, guys, to, get, to do a live stream, to have a successful live stream, make sure you turn off your phone. Well, or you just have a live uh, audience dialing in. I don't mind. <laughs> well, you can always leave comments. But going back on the preparation of the video, yes. um, so so we're we're talking mainly about the script and having a script planned and stuff. Do you really prepare for shots as well, or do you do any other work? I find that um, I can't. I generally don't like to over prepare my scripts I like I generally have yeah. like you know like basically bullet points I find I've tried to write a, a proper nicely written script and it never really works for me because I can never remember what I'm supposed to be saying mm -hmm. however if I, if I have three four points I should be covering and then sort of like work from that it becomes a lot more natural you yeah. know uh, yeah. How do you do yours? Do you do book point or quite tight scripts? No, I never do a quite tight script. I always have an idea of what I will say because normally I'm on a location and yeah. it's, uh, or I read due to a museum what I just learned and try to tell the infer uh, interesting inf like facts that I just discovered there. Okay. Uh, but what I do do before I go somewhere is normally watch some videos about the locations and what kind of videos are already out there. Okay. Mainly one, what do I want to see myself because... Yep. I need to plan my trip as well. And secondly, um, what kind of videos are missing and I think will create an additional value to that location. Completely agree with you. Well, so that's how we prepare for our videos, guys. Let us know how you guys prepare for your videos as well. Um, I'm always willing to like share ideas and steal your ideas. I mean, to you know, innovate from your ideas. Shall we move on to the next se section? Yeah, so uh, I think we indeed move on to the next section. So yeah, now the next section is about the country that we're going to feature. Last week we had South Korea, so it's this time for Joe to feature a country. And what are you going to tell me everything about? 
Okay, so I'm going to tell you one of my favourite cities at the moment, and that is Hamburg in Germany. Do you know why it's my favourite country, Sven? No, I, I think, well, are we talking about your favourite country or are we talking about your favourite city? Because oh, I think we're going to talk about your favourite city. Okay, then, my favourite city. I, I did. I was going to choose a country, but I realised it was way too hard. Ah, uh, yeah, so so why is why is Hamburg your favourite city? Because... Is it your favourite city in the world? It's up there. Up it's, there. It's definitely up there. It, it, whenever somebody when somebody asks me what's your favorite thing, country, f- whatever, I always find it really hard. Yeah. It's, it's definitely my favorite city in Europe at the moment for a few reasons. Um, I recently went. So full disclosure, I was uh, I was invited to the Reaperfarm Festival for Hamburg Tourism Board and discovered some new things. But I also was there earlier last year for um, Keyframe. The reason why Hamburg is my favourite city is because I love being by the water, city by the water, like London, Brighton. That's the first thing. Second thing is it's got a very interesting contrast of two different worlds. You have St. Pauli, which is a bit chaotic, very punk, very like yeah, chaotic. And then you have the old part of Hamburg. Mm-hmm. I love that history. And the third part is they have really good seafood. Like seafood? Yeah, yeah. It's by the by the water, would you believe? They have seafood. <laughs> <laughs> and so because and also a fourth thing is music. Wait, wait, wait. Seafood. Yeah. What kind of seafood? Okay, so they have this thing called um, it's basically like, it's very simple. It's called a fish roll. <laughs> a fish roll, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. just a fish roll. I'm just loving fish rolls. I'm a big fan of actually um, actually I would say, I would say that in the Netherlands is quite high up there as my favourite country. Because mainly they have herring, pickled fish. You're one of the few people that love herring, I guess. I, I, lo- I love it, but I'm Dutch and I know what it tastes like. But even yeah. in the Netherlands, loads of people hate it. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, have you guys ever been to Netherlands and tried the best Dutch food? Herring is the best Dutch food. If you like fish. If you don't like fish, maybe skip it. <laughs> but anyway, um, Hamburg is in a very musical city. And it, it's because, well, that's basically where a small band called the Beatles, that's where they became the Beatles. Because when they were kids from uh, Liverpool, they got dragged over and they played, I think, something like 180 nights straight. So they had a lot of practice. Mm-hmm. And each of these sessions lasted between four to eight hours or some stupid number, basically constantly playing. Turns out, um, have you heard about the the... The, was it? There's a phrase saying if you practice for 10,000 hours at anything, you'll probably master it. Okay, okay. Well, we've de- they've definitely hit that 10,000 hours after <laughs> playing so many months and years yeah. <laughs> for long sessions. But yeah. So uh, if I would visit Hamburg, how, how many days do I need to explore the city? Okay, so Hamburg is actually quite small. Yeah. And um, that's what I love about it. Hamburg is like a perfect, perfect weekend city. So if you go fly out on the Thursday, by the Sunday evening, you yeah. would have done all the good stuff, basically. Um, so that's what I would do. But also on top of that, um, they, you see some incredible things in Hamburg. It's, like I said, a bit of a chaotic city. Uh, I do have a video about a particular interesting institution called the uh, the Fish Market, which basically opens at four o'clock in the morning. And people are just like, finish, actually, I think six o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. People finish from the night before on the Saturday. Sunday morning it opens and people are just, turn up just to go to the Sunday market and to have a beer oh. first thing on Sunday. And it's very, very fun. It's a good city to visit, I guess. Yeah, so very good so, city. so I ha- when I go to Hamburg, I have to visit the fish market. I need to try to go there when the musical festival yep. or music festival is going. That's right. I need to visit the Beatles. Yep, a Beatles tour. A Beatles a tour. Very, very good Beatles tour. Um, and other things I need to visit when I'm in uh, Hamburg? Well, they have a very interesting mini model uh, museum, which is basically a museum. It's actually supposed to be a train museum. That's the, what they sell it as. But imagine a miniature train museum where all you see is, is trains, mm-hmm. mountains, and miniaturized cit- cities from around the world, including Hamburg. That's nice. This yeah. is in in uh, Moscow, you have a location as well where they built like... Moscow in small like miniature version and also with moving trains and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So it's uh, quite familiar there. And yeah. of course it's a big thing in Germany. I remember even my dad has those stuff, those miniature trains and they were all made in Germany, I believe. So yep. Yep. yeah. Anything else that you can uh, tell us about uh, 
Hamburg. Well, why I need to go there? Why? Oh. Why is this like the what, city to go? Why is it the city to go? You see, it's there's just so much of it. Like I, I would, I could imagine myself living in the Hamburg because of the fact that well, there's both the music, the the old and the new. I'm a big fan of history, as you may have seen some, some of my videos, and it has a lot of history to it. And um, like Hamburg was one of the um, biggest. Uh, it's a free trade city yeah. in that region. And so if you like your history, there's that to learn. But if you like something a bit more modern, there's also got a very like punk, very like great beer culture. And if you like beer, it's a really good place to go. But that's Germany in general, right? That's that like... is true. But they have lots of good breweries in a very sh- uh, small space. So you can okay. have an epic pub crawl all around Hamburg. <laughs> It'll be amazing. All right. Then uh, I need to try to find some cheap flights to Hamburg, I guess. Or we'll have a drive from my city in the Netherlands when I'm back. Uh-huh. And uh, for a weekend, yeah, uh, sounds like a good trip uh, to go there. Um, Budget-wise, is it a is it an affordable city? It's definitely an affordable city. There's budgets, of course, like most places in Germany. There's uh, the budget does range. Um, you could easily go, uh, book a hostel for about eleven, twelve euros a night, and then on top of that, you can actually like spend cheap food. Like okay, the the sauce, German sausage is renowned for being a nice, good snack food. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of German sausage. That sounds probably wrong sometimes. But yes, and beers is relatively cheap as well. Okay, so a nice old city mm-hmm. with some good food. Yep. German-style Bavarian food, I guess. Yep. With the addition that in, besides only the meat, you also have the fish. Mm-hmm. And then uh, some great places with uh, some old history to visit as well and some uh, good festivals. Exactly, exactly. That sounds as a very good place to visit. Oh, one, one last thing. The Reeperbahn Festival is in September. Uh, I do have a video about it, so do check it out. Okay, then I think we'll leave it there for Hamburg. Yes. And uh, we will move on to the next section of the video. Yeah. And so let's go in to our travel question of the week, where we answer, well, we ask one travel question of the week. So... Well, what's the travel question? What's the question? The question? <laughs> yeah, that's so, not there. That's I, think, not I think we asked we asked this question at the end of the live stream uh, last week, and and we posted it on our social medias as well. And the question that you guys were most most interested in for us to answer was, what is our most epic trip? So, Sven, do tell what is your most epic. Travel oh damn! Now we're starting with me. Yeah, no. I know you asked me this <laughs> before the live stream, and you said, "Sven, what is your most epic trip?" And I'm just thinking, "What is it?" Yes, what because is, what is it? Tell because us, do tell, no, do but tell. the problem is with all those trips, it's it's like your children, and I don't have children, <laughs> but if you're going to ask a parent, "What is your favorite child?" They can't answer that question. Like all those trips, it's like comparing apples with pears. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I went to Sri Lanka. It's a great trip. It's It was short, two weeks trip. Some epic moments, maybe the most epic train journey of, uh, of yeah. my life. But Trains it, in Sri Lanka? Yeah, no, they have the, the most epic train journey that you can ever imagine. I never in knew Sri- that. Uh, I never knew that. No, that, that's that's the that's uh, I think it's one of the best train journeys that you can do uh, okay. in the world. But um, yeah, is is that just my most epic trip? Would it be the trip to Peru where I got like this kind of travel bug and decided to travel the world? Would it be my volunteers' work in in Uganda, for example, or in Tanzania, where I stayed for like for an internship for a long term period? Would it be an exchange period? Would it be the place where I met my girlfriend. Like, there's so many trips, and they're all different and yeah. all great for a different reason. Yeah, they're they're epic things that happen. It's like, if I need to give a moment, always a, okay. a hike is normally okay. great. Okay, let me rephrase it. If you had the time machine, actually, you have a little box with a button that you can press and go to one point of your trip. Where would it be? One place, only one place. Yeah, one place, man. Yeah. Come on, feel the instinct. It's like it's instinct right there. It's calling you. It's not. Come back here. Come back here. It's not. It's not. Because it's not an instance. Because okay, bring it comes to your mind right now without thinking. Right now, Ghana. Ghana. There you go. See, um, why Ghana? 
because it was just a great way of um, being combined with with locals. Yep. And just traveling around. It was like the one of the trips that I completely did on my own, completely arranged on my own. Where you could say like. Taiwan was also a trip that I did on my own, but yep. that's an exchange. So there's still people from your university going. Yeah, yeah. This was my project in in Ghana. I arranged everything myself. I got funding for the project I was doing. I had to oh, nice. arrange all the conversations with the NGOs there. In the meantime, I was helping out a disabled person to to start his own business in a sustainable way, rather than wow. being depending on funding. Okay. I um. There's even a video coming up uh, live tomorrow where I will showcase. Um, little spoiler I had here but uh, I was a best man on someone's wedding there so I went to a village in Ghana for someone's wedding awesome so it's just a combination of all those different things and I met my girlfriend there as well so that's why I ended up here so there you go guys <sighs> okay that, that was my most there epic trip go. then there you go that was easy right Feel it was instinct it, it wasn't but okay if, <laughs> if you say so what was your most epic trip then because you're oh. saying this is easy prove to everyone this is an easy thing okay so i must admit i do agree with you it's actually really hard each of my trips have been unique and different in any special ways but the one that sticks to my mind is um, my trans-siberian uh trip and it's not just the trans-siberian i actually went from London to Beijing trains only which included the Trans-Siberian and that's where I discovered my absolute love for train travel so if there's anybody who loves train travel let me know because we can have conversations about train travel and the Trans-Siberian is one of those like golden moments of travel for those epic lovers of trains have you ever been to the Trans Trans Siberian, or have you felt about doing it? Yeah, I have felt doing it. Then I saw the price, and I decided at the moment, no. <laughs> and then it was as well. Uh, we did we did a overnight train, a sleeper train from Saint Petersburg to Moscow, which okay. isn't exactly a Trans Siberian that, Express, no, not at all. That's definitely not the Trans Siberian. Yeah. No, it's not not at all part of the route even. But mm -hmm. it gives you a kind of like that Soviet time feeling of trains, oh, which completely. was which was great. Completely. But uh, yeah, no, was it expensive to Trans-Siberian Express? Because that's my main issue when I look mm -hmm. at the prices online. So um, the Trans-Siberian itself, eh, I mean, I paid a bit too much. There's actually a breakdown of the costs uh, I, I actually did, like pretty much every cost put down on my on my uh, on a Google sheet somewhere. There's a link on that a video that you're seeing mm -hmm. now. And yeah, it's kind of expensive if you do it for agency, but at the same time, I was in a bit of a rush to organize it all. So you can do it all yourself. And it's, you know, I mean, expensive, it depends, it's a relative term. Yeah, know? okay, like experience is worth, like... Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's been yeah. like, if you go to Japan and buy uh, individual train tickets, that's expensive. But if you, And also, if you tra travel around um, the UK, with trains that's expensive yeah but in the trans siberian the fact that you travel so far well it is a long journey of yeah, course yeah exactly it takes you seven days to go from uh, uh moscow to Vladivostok, the most end the end of the actual train ride yeah mm. you know i haven't thought about trans siberian well i have thought about it but i'm more keen of there are some areas where i met some friends doing taiwan as well but that like oh i forgot uh lake 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 bakal lake bakal, uh, bakal. That's a place where I just want to go during winter. And yes. During around like February, March, when that part is completely frozen. I, yep. I need to visit my friend oh, over there. Same here. That's actually what's when I want to go back to do the Trans-Siberian again by going to Lake Bacal when it's frozen. We yeah. should do it sometime. Unless there's a sponsor out there that lists, wish to sponsor us. Maybe real Russia. Uh, I'm just going to visit my friends over there, I guess, <laughs> and then uh, she can guide me around. Which is <laughs> awesome. Great. And I have a good ketchup over there as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's it, really. Train tra travel right through to Beijing. So it's the Trans Trans-Siberian Express, that's your uh, most mm -hmm. epic trip. Yep. Um, most epic, yes. Most... Uh, memorable yeah most epic overall because i had so much fun doing it okay you definitely proved that this is way easier for you to choose than for me to be fair because you were way faster in choosing this well there's most epic most memorable most uh enjoyable or like very interchangeable terms i basically just follow my gut and the trans siberian st sticks out so much for me <laughs> <laughs> all right then yes. uh, i think it's uh, time to move uh, yep. to the last section
So I think the last section is coming back to basically where we started with the previous section. And that's figuring out what we're going to provide to you guys next week. Yes. So what uh, what will be, Joe? You're, you're the creative guy here. You are... The creator. I am I the am I the creative guy? You I wouldn't place the... myself in the creator's space. But okay, so we're gonna ask ourselves out of these three choices, which do you want to hear? Now we're gonna post this on our social medias, Instagram or Twitter. Um, and we're gonna ask solo versus group travel as option number one. So, Second, the biggest travel fails. Oh, and the third one is what is the most Epic travel trip? No, that can't be the case because we already did that this time. <laughs> no, so those two basically. Solo versus group travel or what's our biggest travel fails? Which do you want to hear? No, I think we can do a, a third one uh, in there as well. And that's uh, what is our budget travel location of choice? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so go through the three choices again. First and if one. there's anyone, anything else that you want to add as well, just feel free to ping that along or put it in the comments below, and we will. Uh, we'll get back well, to we'll you. Well, we'll consider those as well. I'm yes. not saying we will doing it. Mm -hmm. Depends on how good those questions are, but we will consider it. Excellent. Well, so, what were the three? The solo versus group travel. The biggest travel fails. And uh, the budget travel locations. Well, yeah, the 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 budget the, our. Budget travel choice, basically. Oh, budget travel choice. Is that city or country? Um, just budget travel of choice. Like some places you would say, I want to do a city trip. Or mm -hmm. some cities you can spend ages. Like I could spend in Seoul yep. seven days. Yep. Uh, but sometimes you would say, no, it's a country. Because like just the city is not enough. So That's true. That's true. Ooh, that's I'll leave it free for uh, the moment. We can okay. consider what that would be. Mm. I'm going to take a... This is going to be a, bit, a lot harder for me to answer. Okay, well, in that case, I do believe that comes to the close of the Sven Joe Travel Show. So if you want to follow us on social medias, I am D 